Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Pam throughout chapter for giving me this opportunity to talk about my work this morning and to share with you guys. Um, I guess I'll start with a slight a bit about my background. Um, I graduated from Melbourne Uni in 2000, and then I worked for about 15 years at DNA, Design Network Architects, with a group of um, really cool and supportive uh, people, and um, who actually really uh, influenced um, my approach to architecture and how I work. Um, some of them are here, I can see. Um, one person in particular is uh, Min, actually, um, uh, who actually um, um, has been a mentor even since when I was training and up to right now. Okay, so thank you, Min. Okay, cool. <laughs> right, um, so I'll tell you um, how we started, how we started our firm about three and a bit years ago. So in 2015, um, Min, Leong, Leong Jengren, and I decided to leave um, Design Architects to form our own um, practices. Um, because we felt that at that time it was the right thing to do and we wanted to grow in a direction that was uh, probably a bit different from where uh, DNA was heading. So we decided to go independently and just try something on our own. So we came together, since every, all of us have been working together for quite a while and we, we had fun doing that. So we decided, hey, why don't we just come together um, um, you know, it's cheaper to share maybe an office. Uh, so we tried experimenting, um, creating a co-working sort of office. So we actually share the office. Um, we share uh, resources, we share expenses, as well as um, sometimes we share workforces. Um, it's worked out so far quite well. So that's our office, SML. That's a photo of our team. Okay, the first project I'm going to talk about is actually my practice, how we converted an old shop house in um, old town of Kuching into our office. This is an aerial of where our office is, so the little red dot right in the left side. So our office is on Upper China Street, a very old part of Kuching. So this is a, a photo of um, the street, and our office is just next to the yellow one. So we found the office in a really, really, really bad condition. Um, it was basically um, uh, just rubbish. Um, the, the roof had um, collapsed, there was water damage everywhere, and essentially the whole place was like a, a time capsule from the 1980s, 30 over years, almost 40 years untouched. No one, no human actually went in. So this, so these are just um, what it was like upstairs, just ruined. So when we um, demolition started, um, we discovered actually this place had a lot of soil, um, really beautiful textures. You know the old brickworks. People were excited. Um, you could, and when we took off the rotten floor, you could really feel the space, the textures, the sun coming in. So we actually loved, fell in love and we were really excited about this place. So we, we thought um, it's a good idea, let's retain most of this character in our workforce. So renovation started and um, this is part of the early works. Um, the design-wise, this is a section through the whole uh, shop house, it's actually quite short. So the um, top space we open up, one big studio-like environment, workspace. Um, and on the ground floor, um, it's our meeting room, library, multi-purpose, party spot, um, anything. And all toilets and all that are there. So this is a photo of the work environment, so one big space. 
just looking down. So um, you can't actually see which office is where. So we all mix around and work together. This is the ground floor uh, meeting room with our uh, little kitchenette, uh, archives and stuff like that. And sometimes we have parties there. The next uh, project is a small project. So the first two projects will be basically projects that we collaborated with um, Minwi Architect. So the, that was the first, the office, and this is the second. Uh, revamp at Co. 55. Um, so, um, okay, the site is actually at the Cove. Um, I'll go to the one before that. Yep, okay. So you have the uh, Santubong Peninsula, and right near where the neck is, the little red dot, that's where the site is. So the site is by the sea. Uh, it was an existing uh, private property that um, doubled up as a hotel. The land where the property sits on was also partially included. Uh, it also included part of the seashore and the sea with a large infinity pool for guests. I'm sorry, yeah, the, the sea. The project had two parts. Um, first is the sea, de sea deck. Um, uh, basically, it's a big deck over the sea that the client wanted to build so that guests could actually enjoy that. And the other one is some renovation to the grounds, um, like the uh, actual building, the outside, to, to, for creating uh, like car park drops or drop off and all that. So this is a photo of um, what the shoreline was before work started. Just really surreal and all that. This is on low tide. Okay, so um, we work together. So this is a, an early sketch by Min. The initial idea was for an irregular shaped deck with jagged edges, which almost felt like it grew from the rocks. However, a few rounds with the client and their preference for something more streamlined and linear, and also they had a quite a tight budget, saw the deck adapting a more rectilinear form. So this is what it ended up looking like. Small projects offer a good training ground for interns and young colleagues. Our office places a lot of importance in welcoming and offering trainees from local colleges and universities to do hands-on work and hopefully get something built while they're on with our office. So in this project, um, the trainees had opportunities to experiment with uh, things like you know, the tiling, um, the pebble wash patterns, which the uh, client wanted. Um, he, he, they love this hairy bone thing because um, somehow it relates to the sea. So we were asked to um, experiment with this. So the whole deck was clad in a pebble wash herring bone pattern. So students got to uh, work out how to set this up, how to document it. Also, um, they got to like detail planter boxes, um, plant uh, the pump room, pump room door, things like that. So then they get to see what it's like on site, how pebble wash is actually done. And there are planter boxes being built. And this is a particularly interesting one. This one is the uh, herringbone sliding pump room door. So uh, one of the trainees, Kai Wen, actually um, had a hand with this and then later um, worked out, was um, trying it out and having fun with it. So these are the grounds. Another trainee, um, Pang, um, he, he tried um, to do it like a special wall um, of undulating brickwork. So he said, yeah, why not uh, have a go? So he worked out uh, the geometry, the how, how many degrees it should turn and all that, and basically uh, produced drawings that eventually got built. That 3D images he had to do to um, explain to the contractor who thought we were crazy. And this is the work on site being done. The end product. You can see the walls, the brickwork slowly coming out and coming in and all that. Just for, just for kicks. So projects, small projects actually um, um, give us the opportunity to do, to do uh, fun stuff like that. I'll just uh, go a brief uh, 
few slides to show you the, the overall project. So this is Cove, on the left is the building, and then the sea deck is right at the end on the far right. The ramp going up the sea deck, um, the infinity pool and the stats coming down to the lower deck. So this is in the uh, evening during sunset. And now I'll, I'll uh, talk about a few of the projects uh, done by SML architects. Okay, the first one is a little law office in KL at Plaza Damas, Sri Hatamas KL, which he had been renting out to an agency. So he decided uh, it's the cheapest way is to take over this agency and uh, start his thing there. So these are just photos of what the place looked like. Very typical, really congested, just little, little rooms. So the brief. Um, he dreamt of an office that felt like a home, a place where he could have coffee with friends and where he could just finally um, display his... He had a big collection of like antique furniture and he, artwork as well, so he could like chuck all these things here and make his wife happy. They were all at home. So um, we started um, with an empty pallet. And um, the intention was actually to bring in as much light, natural light into this space. The original space only had, you can see at the bottom, three little windows. It's an intermediate shop lot that allowed a bit of light into the space. So that was a major thing. So we organized the um, office slot into three uh, clear sections. To the first one is an informal reception um, in the, at right at the front here, top of the page. And this was like a, a kitchen setup, a bar setup, and people would come in here, he will make them a coffee, chat, you know, uh, if he likes the client, um, uh, they move on. Uh, the central part of the whole place is the meeting pot, a meeting room, uh, a, almost a glass box. And then on the bottom side, um, where the windows are, obviously it's Simon's office, so he gets the direct sun there. But we made sure we did not have any blinds on the windows, and all the partitions are minimized. And they're either transparent, translucent, or you can actually see through them. Uh, they're quite permeable visually. That also allows uh, for the aircon to be shared between the spaces. So this is just a 3D of it. You can see um, right on that side, it's where you en enter. So it's like a kitchen, a bar, lounge, relaxed area. Very not typical of a uh, uh, law office, I think. And then in the middle, the meeting room with uh, openable uh, sites. And then the workspaces at the end. So essentially, you greet them, you meet them, then you work at the back. So these are just fun photos of what the place ended up looking like. Um, this is the uh, reception. So people come into this space here from the far end. There's a door there. So we used actually a, a, a bit of a concrete van block and glass and played with that to create the space. And on the left here is um, the meeting room and there's a glass partition where you can easily see to the uh, works, workspace on the right side and right at the end is Simon's office. So this is looking back again at the central meeting area from the workspace. And this is just Simon's office and his waiting area on the other end. So he actually commissioned a piece of art uh, at the end wall to, for his office. So overall, actually, he was really, really happy. And then we thought, oh, maybe he'll give us another job. Yeah, so yeah, he did his kitchen extension. So that, but I won't, I won't be talking about that. Um, the next um, project is um, a house, bungalow. So I'll be talking about uh, three, pro three projects next, and they're all houses, because houses are something that I've been doing and I am still doing throughout my career, and which I really enjoy doing. So the first one I call uh, Rantau Panjang. Um, that is because the place is actually at Rantau Panjang. But um, also another reason is, um, I think the, the word Panjang is a key word here. Um, it's the longest project I've ever worked on. Uh, it started in 2010, so that was like, what, nine years 
almost nine years ago, and it's just a house. Um, uh, the second reason, Panjang, also the building is a linear house, so it's quite long, planned that way. So, so I thought that would end up be a, an appropriate description about the project. So uh, the client. The client, Linda, is an American life coach who travels all around the world, non-stop, literally, uh, to hold talks, workshops, seminars, and all that. And Kuching being one of her favorite spots, she decided to build a house there and a complex to do training. So she's got um, houses all over the world. So she chose this secluded land um, because it's right near to one of her students' house. And this house would be where she would retreat occasionally, host large parties, uh, groups of people, and later, when she's finished with his talks and all that, retire here. In her own words, a place to connect with people, with nature, and high-end beauty. So, um, you, you see the locality plan, the red dot, it's really in the middle of nowhere. And that zoom in. So, it, um, the only thing there is like, uh, two other detached houses. And that's the site. We decided that uh, um, the f before we could start the design process, I was asked to attend her classes to understand what she was all about. So I thought that was interesting. Um, essentially, it was a leadership course that thought about self-awareness, uh, self-discovery, about understanding others and basically uh, taking charge of your life to make choices that make you have the best life you can have. So taking that with me, I felt uh, it was important that the how should um, sort of mimic and um, play along that line. So the idea of the journey came in. So the house was designed as a journey a sequence of spatial experiences that unfolded as one moved into and around the building. So the first thing we did was to do a detailed sur topographical survey, and we identified all the uh, big trees around that site. The intention was to make sure that we touch as few trees as possible. So we lo were looking out for the clearing places where just there were minimum trees. We, um, luckily for us, the highest point of the site was quite flat and uh, amazingly uh, hardly any trees there. So that was one spot. The other was right at the bottom, um, also a clearing at the bottom. So one at the high point, which will be Linda's house, and the other one um, where she had, holds classes. And these two com complexes, we decided it should be because of the size of uh, the shape of the land be quite linear and there would be linked. The journey would be expressed by two feature opposing walls or planes that runs through the two buildings, intersecting and connecting where one enters the house. These walls would guide, would hide, would reveal, would protect, and also store as one progresses through the building. The main house is divided into two parts by the north-south wall. A private area containing her study, bedrooms, bathrooms, and storage on one side, and the public spaces like the living room, dining room, and open kitchen on the other. The other building essentially consists of two open living wings with bedrooms at one end. So this was the plan we actually uh, uh, show, showed the um, client and was approved. And we also made a, a study model to explain the sighting and our ideas. So this shows um, how the, two, the relationship between the two buildings, a bridge connecting them, the main building sitting on the high ground and basically hovering off the, the, um, the land that fell away from it. 
We did a sketch up as well to show her. In the end, as she decided um, she, she was going to build her house first and leave the other part later. So I'll guess I'll be talking about the house only from now on. One experiences the house differently depending on the approach chosen, like journey through life. This is the private approach for the owner, and then there's the um, uh, garden route, and for visitors, it could be the garden route or the bridge approach. And these three journeys meet right in the middle of the house where the planes intersect at the foyer. And from there, um, the public or visitors can actually proceed to the public spaces. And um, if you're the house owner or uh, a guest, you can go to the left, which is we are all the bedrooms and private spaces. Okay, um, I think the best way to um, really experience the house is to, I'll bring you through with photos. Uh, because it's really about the journey and the sequence of um, spaces that you go through this house. So when you come to the, ha to the house as a visitor, or you, um, there's actually no garage, drop-off areas or anything like that. You basically come and the only way to get in there is through this uh, little walkway bridge by the edge of the site. So you, you go along this boardwalk with your luggage maybe. And then where there's a, a larger slope, you can actually um, lift down a, a little plank and then you pull up your trolley up there because she travels a lot and then she needs this for her luggages. And then as you move towards the house, uh, you can see a wall starting to form from um, like little colonnade columns and then they form into a wall and they welcome you through this clearing. So that's the approach to the house. This is the private approach. So this is just a typical section, uh, very, very simple through the house. So you see it's just one big, one sloped roof uh, with deep overhangs over the whole entire linear volume. And we, on the top, um, we allowed glass to be a, a glass uh, screen all around so that there's natural light always coming in from the top. So this is when you open the front door and um, you come into a gallery. Now on your right is that stone wall, the, the feature wall that um, from outside coming in. And on the other side, it's uh, a wall of timber panels. It basically looks like a wall panel when all the doors are closed. So there are secret doors uh, um, in this panel. When it's closed properly, you really don't know where the doors are because there are do no handles or anything at all. There are not even locks on the doors. So you basically touch, 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 and you push, and then there's your bedroom behind that. This is just looking back from the entrance and the other side of the gallery. So this space would open up to the client's library, uh, walk-in wardrobes, and between the inner space, there are also links. So this is the wardrobe uh, going to the master bedroom beyond the master bedroom. Um, it's still under construction. And then after the rooms, right at the gallery, um, you come to the meeting point at the center. So the right picture is actually the, where the meeting point is. And this is a, also a view. Um, this is the other entry. So this would be the uh, bridge entry where students, for example, would come in, this long bridge, and they come to this meeting point. So this is the public space. So after that center part, um, Essentially, you come to this big, big deck. Um, that's where the living, the dining, the kitchen, and all that would be. Uh, really, really open. So um, all the doors and doors fold away, and you essentially have a garden room. So that's the relationship between inside and outside. So the whole building actually floats above uh, another further view. So this is right down where the... Um, uh, the other building might be in future. So you can see it's really just a big roof, open deck in the middle of um, a little jungle. Another view. 
And that's um, one of the entrances. So you can see the really open on the right side public area and the more private um, uh, block part of the building on the right, the left. Sorry. Some night shots. The gallery, looking back. Rooms, the living space. The feature wall at night, the private areas. So at night, um, it's this box, that long box that glows, this long linear thing. It's an urban bungalow at the fringe of a housing area at Jalan Song, which is why it's the Song House. So that's the side, uh, the red dot there. So you can see um, on one side, it's, um, it's surrounded by uh, residential lots. And on the other, it's just facing a large, large open piece of land. So we, these are just some site studies to show you what the site forces are. The open space, the access road on one side, and then houses all around on the other side. And so we saw this um, open land as an opportunity where you could get views, you could get breezes, fresh air coming through, um, also, the sun, um, you can see the orientation because of the natural orientation of the land. It's uh, east west, most of the long side. So, we took um, the opportunity to actually um, use this as an advantage. As a planning strategy, a series of parallel northwest southwest planes were introduced to organize and layer the spaces. On the west side lies the main services with the wet kitchen, maid's room, washing and drying yard. This single storey section shields the living spaces on ground floor and on first floor there's a roof garden that shields the bedrooms uh, behind that. This progresses into an intermediate area containing the entrance foyer, dry kitchen and relaxation spaces. The main core of the house containing the surf spaces like the living room, dining room, gym, home offices is served by the central plane and also a circulation spine. This spine is expressed as a feature wall within the house with an attached timber walkway running through the length of the building. It then continues to journey outwards and ends at the garden wall. So this is the living core spaces. And after the last one, um, the core areas are then lined by a band of transitional spaces, terraces with screens, and all that um, we also introduce bodies of water around the house as element for cooling, and also it, um, be, and because the uh, client actually loves um, keeping koi and fishes, so water was a big part of the scheme and pulled apart at various sections to harvest light and air. They draw in constant breezes into the, and around the house. One takes, um, to really draw in constant breezes, we actually introduced two main design elements. There, there were two um, wind funnels. Uh, that we inserted into the building. One of the wind funnels takes the form of a double volume screen entrance foyer with a permeable floating balcony. The other, a floating staircase and stairwell open to the elements. Both funnels are also integrated with water bodies to further cool down passing air and then screened to filter direct east-west sun. This also provides security for the homeowners who, who, whom were not actually mm, quite convinced at the first because everything was so open, so we wanted security, so we provided these screens. Light, on the other hand, is drawn into the building through large windows and doors forming most of the external skin. These, uh, all the uh, external skin also either have screens or have deep balconies that um, shed the light. 
A roof with deep overhang hovers over the whole building like a big umbrella. In some areas, overhanging up to 8 meters. On the upper floor, a skylight, a skylight lights up the central circulation spine that feeds the bedrooms and connects the two wind funnels. There's the skylight above. So that's the plan of the house. You can very clearly see, it, especially on ground floor, um, the cir central circulation, the segments through the um, the planes that run through the whole house. And on first floor, the circulation, the two funnels and the rooms in yellow that are attached to these. An exo um, showing the, the main elements, the water, the planes, the funnel, the attached roof, and the big umbrella on top. I'll go through the building uh, so you can see what the end looks like. So this is the view of the uh, house from the street. And like the other house, this house also has different approaches. This is the garden view and the garden approach. This is the main, main door. So you open the main door. And you come in through this uh, double volume um, foyer, outdoor foyer, indoor outdoor foyer, with a floating balcony on top. Then you enter the main living space, um, open, open plan, and you can see the timber that runs through the building. So that's where it's next to the main uh, circulation spine. The terraces of the living spaces, so the doors actually fold open. The main kitchen with the dining at the back. The gym with its little courtyard and a barbecue deck on each side. The family area with uh, uh, its own uh, water body cooling. And you can just sit there and, and read and all that. And this is one of the funnels. This is the staircase, the floating staircase. So I'm showing this slide because just an offshoot story. Um, so the client, when he first saw the staircase being done, he was really, really nervous because it was literally a floating staircase. There was no support. He was really worried. So the engineer said, really trust me. So what we did was we took bags and bags of um, uh, cement, lined them all along the staircase, and then we got the the most, the, well, the biggest people on site, um, including the engineer, he, he's the guy in blue, and, and they basically walked up and down, jumped up and up, and then nothing moved or vibrated, so that's how we got the staircase built. Uh, that's the staircase. So it actually floats on water, uh, an external view. So it's totally open, so when it rains, um, some rain would come in, a bit of wind would come in, and yeah, so that's, that's one of the uh, nostrils, I would say, where air, air comes in. So above, um, this is the floating, so that you have one end with the um, staircase, the other end is the uh, floating balcony. So um, in actual fact, when you open this too, there's a constant uh, breeze always moving around the house. And then um, the client says when it's about to rain, you know, when there are big rains, they have to rush up and quickly close everything because things start flying. Yeah, so it, it really works. So that's um, the floating balcony. Uh, yep. Um, this is uh, one of the rooms um, in the house. Um, uh, very neat person. And then the rooms would have an outdoor counterpart. For this one, it has a, a green wall, a planter. And then another one um, for the other bedrooms, for example, a deep balcony where they can hang out. And then with a folding, uh, with sliding screens. And on the ground floor, this is the dining terrace. So again, screens that get open out. A view from the back, so you can really see the planes coming out, we express that. Between some planes, you have the family area, maybe the other one would have the gym. And then some areas we puncture so that you have visual connection and you can actually walk through the planes to get from one space to the other. 
This is the central um, spine that goes right to the garden at the back at night, just relaxing the terrace. So this is the entrance. When you switch on the lights, you can actually see through the whole building and you can imagine the air going through, water on both sides. This is the uh, entrance, this is the garden entrance. Staircase, I mean, out from outside. And then um, the family having dinner with all the terraces open. So this is a very typical, we did a surprise photo shoot because it was raining all the time. So it's like, we're coming. So, um, so this is actually what happens. Out, um, outdoor uh, front view. And then from across the open space. So the whole building actually opens up to that open space. Okay, the, this is the last project, um, Karanji House. So this house, again, it's similar, the site, um, urban, quite urban. And then it's right at the curve of a road and facing an open space. In this case, it's uh, like a river reserve with a little river up there in Tabuan Jaya, Lorong Karanji. So there, that's the site. And on the site, you can see there are trees, existing trees. There are actually four large trees on the site. Street view. Um, from the street, the site is very narrow. It's just a very small opening. And then towards the back, the site expands. So these are just some um, study diagrams. So the open space are key, is a key, that was a key design consideration. The river. That's the access road, the building around it. So it was really surrounded except for the back. So again, uh, opportunity for views, for breezes. And basically, that's how the sun worked north-south. The orientation of the land was pretty much north-south, just off it. So um, we started off uh, designing that way. The first thing to consider were the trees. So we plotted that down, got a surveyor to actually put it accurately on, on, on drawing. Then off that, we introduced, um, um, again, planes as tools to actually define um, the public face and the private face. In this case, um, because it's facing a residential road, um, we thought, and the client also desired, um, to be quite private when it's on the, facing the street, and then to really open up to the back. Above these two intersecting spines would hover a veil of lace bricks. And this lace bricks veil uh, provides the opportunity for the client to actually peer out secretly from the rooms beyond and actually have a look at the neighborhood without them knowing. So it's very private. Then essentially the whole building is was designed as two pavilions in a garden uh, with a soft connection in the middle. Along that, at the back where the spines are, were all the service areas like the kitchen, the maid's room, the washing area, storage. And then off that, um, on one side is the master wing with the, the living room, uh, dining on ground floor, and on first floor, um, the master bedroom. On the other wing, which is that one, uh, there's a study. And on top, bedrooms. And the soft spine is basically the kitchen on ground floor. And, and this is a double volume kitchen. that is totally open, naturally ventilated, and it vo volume, uh, it's void upstairs. And both these spaces on ground floor and first floor are served by a service deck. The reason because um, we wanted air to come in as well. And, and this, the client um, also um, preferred natural ventilation as much as possible. So that's the plan. So you can see the two yellow strips. Um, those are the two pavilions. And with the soft connection, the kitchen and decks in between. So a uh, section through the uh, building. So you can see how it's very, very permeable. And the only solid thing I would say here would be the, the, the door to the kitchen and the kitchen cabinet. The rest is actually open. And then the trees we incorporated, we actually designed the building around the trees. So there's a courtyard naturally in front. 
So again, I'll bring you through the building. Uh, it's still under construction. So um, just to help you with uh, some imagination, I created some um, SketchUp images. So this was the front entrance. And this is what is on site. Street view. So um, like even the, the, gate, the fencing is quite permeable. The, the brick veil on top going um, into the building from the car park area. Looking back, you can see on the left top there, um, the whole first uh, veil, the brick veil actually peering over that. And this, this allows for wind actually to come in from, this, from below up and vice versa. So there's no slab there. It's entrance. The other side. So this is going into the house. And we found a guy on a motorbike there having an afternoon nap. Um, that is where everything comes together, all the winds, the, all that. So it was really cooling there. I guess he enjoyed that space. So coming into the house, when you go in, it's not like going in. So essentially, you just transition through this threshold. And you basically come to this space the central uh, deck for year. This is the photo of what it's like. And on the other side, with the tree in the middle, um, the living spaces where the dining is and the living space. And this is the central uh, kitchen, the sketch up of it. And this is what it is on site at the moment. So it's totally open. Another view of it. And this is the deck upstairs when you move up the staircase. So what it is now. So you can see uh, the only thing that's going to be add on to this are just some vertical uh, members forming screens. So you can imagine um, the air, the uh, little rain droplets coming through and all that. So the, the client is actually quite fine with that. Actually quite excited about it. The other view. Looking down to the courtyard. And you can see um, one, there's three trees here, one at the courtyard and one further on at the fencing. Later I'll show you. We actually uh, decided to keep the trees even when it was right at the boundary. Uh, the master bedroom. This is a typical room. So you can see they can actually look out and appear out to the main street uh, from the brick lattice. Sorry. The bathroom, solid where you can be seen, not solid when you can't. Outside the bathroom. So this is the rear of the building. Unlike the very private front, the whole building opens to the garden behind. That's the central area. So you can see very clearly the two pavilions on the other side. So you can see the, the trees right at the fence there. We bet, um, the client said, yeah, don't do anything. And we thought it was a really good idea. We just, so we just stopped shop the fence where the tree is. And that's it. So we probably have to do this customized gate between the two trees. So they can swing open later on. A view from the open space. And that's the, at night. It, um, we got the contractor to help out, put some lights on, and it really glows. Uh, thank you. So that's all I have to share this morning.